What I wanted to do today was break from the traditional tractor effect and technique tutorials to bring you something that I thought was uh, fairly important to your music. Now, as a devoted follower to DJ forums and DJ tech tools, I have noticed throughout the years that people have been posting a ton of threads on graphic design and, uh, you know, basically asking for help in making album artwork or flyers or logos or what kind of colors to use. Um, so I wanted to sort of start a new tutorial series uh, that's gonna be called a Graphics for Musicians Masterclass. And basically this is gonna be broken down into about three to four smaller chunks, uh, each one focusing on a certain aspect of design and um, you know what it means and why it's important to your music. And basically, for those of you who don't know me, um, you know, I am a professional designer and art director in the Los Angeles area. I've been doing it for about 10 years now. I've worked with companies like Warner Brother Records. I've, you know, worked with people like DJ Tech Tools and DubSpot. And, um, you know, I definitely have um, the experience for this. But what I wanted to do was sort of share what I've learned throughout the years and, you know, my training with you and sort of break it down in a sense where I'm talking to a musician and not another designer. So I'm always going to try and relate the things that I'm going to teach you back to your music. And, um, you know, hopefully everything makes a little bit of sense and, and you can apply it to, you know, your, your overall brand as a musician. So for this first series, what I'm going to just kind of talk about is album artwork. And, um, you know, album artwork is sort of a dying art that used to be very, very big um, back when records and CDs were being distributed. But with digital distribution, this kind of, you know, wasn't as important, you know, instead of having to design you know, a three to four panel type of CD or the LP cover. Now you just have to have a basic image for, you know, essentially iTunes or SoundCloud or your Bandcamp. Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of become easier, but it's again, a slightly dying art. And with just distribution being the way it is now, um, it's not uncommon for you to go to a blog and download, say, 20 new tracks and about three or four of those are going to have no album artwork, no tagging, and they can kind of get lost in the shuffle unless it's a really, really solid track or a really, really solid mix. So, um, you know, for this first part of the series, again, I want to focus on album artwork and sort of how, you know, you can design your own album artwork and use my templates to your advantage and hopefully, uh, hopefully get you started with creating your own album artwork with some basic design principles. Now, it's really important to note that, you know, an album artwork isn't going to make your track phenomenal and isn't going to get you noticed, but it is, um, you know, essentially telling your listener and your fans that you do care about their experience. You do care that when they put this on their iPhone, when they've taken the time and dedication to download your music, sometimes pay for it, um, put it on their phone and, you know, put it in their car or, you know, listen to it on the bus. You, you are telling them that you care about the overall experience. You don't want them to stare at some blank iTunes logo. You're, you're not an iTunes logo musician, you're your own musician, so you should have your own look and feel and your own voice. Um, so that's basically why I think that album art is important. It's, again, just reiterating to your fans that you want to give them the complete experience. So with that said, um, go ahead and download the Photoshop templates from the website. And I'm going to kind of run through these right now. Um, if you don't have Photoshop, because these are Photoshop templates, you can go to adobe.com and just download the 30-day trial of Photoshop. You'll get a fully functioning 
uh, Photoshop software for 30 days, which will give you enough time to um, sort of work on your templates and decide whether you want to buy Photoshop or not. So these templates have been designed to make it really easy for you to sort of have clean and effective artwork quickly and easily. Uh, but before we kind of dive into where everything is located down here in the layers section, I want to point out that, you know, use these as a starting point for yourself to get familiar with what kind of typefaces pair well with certain colors and images. But definitely feel free to, you know, move things around or, you know, change the colors a little bit. Um, not too much in the beginning because I'm going to be teaching you some stuff about color and photography in another course. But, you know, because these are for, for download and for free, you don't want to have <laughs> the exact same album art as someone, you know, who downloads it from halfway across the country. So, you know, definitely change it up a little bit. Um, but, you know, just try and keep some of the basic principles that I've already set up within the template. Cool. So template one is sort of a more moody and, and dark type of color scheme. It's very sophisticated with this serif typeface. So think of template one as like that smooth delay or soft reverb that gets added to your mix. It's barely there, but it's enough to, you know, elevate that mix just a little bit. And template two is more of a kind of nostalgic type of look. Um, this might pair well with something like, a, you know, a hip hop beat instrumental mixtape, something along those lines. Um, you know, it's got some color and texture down here that, um, you know, kind of transforms what the, the image is gonna look like. Template three is more of a just overall generic type of look, um, you know, depending on what image you decide to drop down here, it can convey different things. But the goal of this one was just to provide a uh, space where the fonts and the typography was very easily readable and can work with sort of any image that you drop in. And template four is, again, much like template three, but it's using a different shape and it's covering up more of the space. So. If that's the kind of look that you want to go for, definitely use uh, template four. And again, you know, drop in whatever image you like. Um, and Instagram is your friend. You know, if you don't have any photography skills, I'm going to kind of cover this in another part of the graphics masterclass. Um, you know, Instagram has done a great job of helping you crop your images, give them a certain look and um, you know transform kind of normal dull images into something a little bit more special so that's just a quick side note but again i'm going to cover that in a different section so for this um, just to show you how to tag it within itunes what you want to do is um, go ahead and open up template one and basically there is a color and texture layer up here that you can turn on and turn off i suggest that you leave it on unless you want to use the actual color of your image. But, you know, the goal of this template was to provide like a, a black and white sophisticated look, a little bit more moody. So you probably want to leave that on. It's got a couple adjustment layers in here. And then you have your text uh, groupings. And it, in here are a few layers that you can go ahead and just go in and change uh, to add your, your artist's name and the title of your mixtape or the title of your production. And finally, down here in the green section is the image. The top image is the texture that sits on top of, of the uh, kind of main image. So that I suggest you leave unless, of course, by all means, you don't think it's necessary to the concept of what you're trying to do. Go ahead and turn it off, throw it in the trash. You know, ultimately, it's your creative decision on what you want your mix or your album art to kind of portray. Cool, so um, down here is where you're gonna drop in your image. Basically, you just drop, drop in your image above this and turn this layer off or throw it, throw it to the trash and you know, you'll have your background image. So that's pretty much it. Um, I've designed them to be very, very easy to understand. Everything's kind of grouped properly, things that are locked 
things that shouldn't be moved but can definitely be turned off. Um, again, it's your creative decision. So I highly recommend that you actually move stuff around. Um, what I've done is just given you a pairing of elements. I've given you the ingredients to make a dish um, that probably no matter what dish you're going to make, it's going to taste pretty good. Um, but it's up to you on how you want to you know, combine that. Uh, similarly to your mixing, I've given you a track list that kind of goes well and is curated well together, but use your mixing style and your blending style to, you know, put everything together. Um, again, you know, reiterating everything to music, keep it simple. You don't want to throw in a ton of really gnarly effects into two songs that already sound great. Um, you know, there's a reason why these fonts have kind of withstood the test of time. Um, you know, they're beautiful. If you look at people like, uh, or artists like the Bloody Beatroots or, you know, Pretty Lights or Kanye West, they all use very basic classic typefaces. Um, the reason for this is because those typefaces are probably gonna look 10 times better than something you might find on thefont.com or something that has a lot of texture to it that is completely unnecessary. Um, by the way, I definitely recommend that you check out prettylightsmusic.com and kanyewest.com for sort of like a graphics homework on typography and color. Um, you know, I basically like both of these guys because they always keep it very simple, very clean and sophisticated. Cool, so now that you have your template, um, all you have to do from here is you want to save it and you want to just save it as a JPEG. So you come down here in your dialog box and you just save it to your desktop. And usually quality 8 is perfectly fine. Um, so now it's on your desktop and then what you want to do is you want to use your iTunes and um, you know, so here's a track that again, you know, hasn't kind of taken the overall experience into consideration. If you drag this into your iPod as a fan, you're going to be pissed because you're going to look under artist and there's going to be no artist name, no, al no album name, no kind of cover artwork so that visually you can reference the track. And, you know, with people getting tons and tons of music nowadays, it can be very easy to kind of lose this MP3 in, you know, thousands and thousands of other tracks that you have. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to duplicate this because I want to show you what they look like side by side. Um, right now it's converting. Um, but basically what we can do is just hit command I or right click and hit get info. And uh, it's still converting. So that's why some of these things are grayed out. Um, but uh, Let's go ahead and do that again. You hit command I or right click and hit get info. And let's just go ahead and take the time to properly tag this, um, you know, MP3. And I'm doing this really, really quickly right now just because I want to show you um, what the difference is when you get uh, two tracks that are put together side by side and one of them has been properly tagged with good artwork and the other one is, you know, just some random mp3 with random tagging. Um, so then you go to the artwork tab and basically on a Mac, it's super easy. You just drop in the JPEG that we saved from Photoshop and you hit OK. And there you have it. So now if we look at these two kind of side by side in comparison, you know, you have one that uh, it you know has an artist name and has an album name and a genre attached to it and it, this you know beautiful artwork cover and then you have another one that's just a generic iTunes logo no artist name like you know don't be generic be be proud of your music and be proud of your mixtapes and you know have a little bit of personality don't forget to check out the rest of the upcoming videos this is Priscilla for pushmorebuttons.com